Alright guys, I'm in the woods today and um, I thought I would show you my survival kit that I've put together. Um, so basically, oh, it's, tell you, it's boiling today in the woods. Uh, we're having some heat wave in England I think for this week. Uh, it's meant to reach 27 today but I can't complain. I'd be happy if it was like that all the time. But anyway, yeah. So here's the pack, the uh, snug pack, response pack, and it all fits in here. There's a few things I haven't got yet, which I do need to get, but um, most of the stuff I have got, and it's in here, so I'll show you. So um, I'll put the camera somewhere where you can see, and I can see what I'm doing. Sorry guys. Right. Right, so there we go, there's the pack. Start off on top, which is a water bottle. Right. So I've got the water bottle clipped on by a carabiner so it doesn't fall out. I'm not quite sure how much water is held in here, but um and that's a decent amount. Uh, I might have two on me if I was going extended but I've done a Cody Lundin on this water bottle wrapped it in tape and put a paracord loop on it so you can hang it um, you know if you didn't know it was good for hanging down crevices if you can't reach somewhere in the bottom of a pool attach it to something lower it down collect some water but um, it's a very good idea to do that and it looks pretty cool anyway um, so that's the water bottle, that's the first item. Now I'll go into the main compartment, the um, main one. Now this is mainly the cover area, but first thing, I've got my knife, just a nice, my Mora clipper, you know, survival knife doesn't have to be too big in your survival kit. I find the Mora is a very, you know, uh, brilliant, just all round amazing knives for the size you know carving splitting preparing game whatever it is this knife can do it that's all you need in a survival situation in my opinion okay next for cover right this is a poncho actually i've got two of these just cheap ponchos i got from um, just a local shop so i think they were a couple of quid for both of them a couple of pounds you know, very good. I've tested this green one um, when we had that wet, uh, pissing it down the other week. Fantastic. Fits over your kit, your pack as well, so nothing else gets wet. But these two ponchos are fantastic. So I definitely recommend having ponchos in your kit. And they can also be effective at using as a shelter, as a means of shelter as well. Next one 55 gallon drum liner. So this can be a um, makeshift poncho but also can be you know a ground tarp use it as a tarp just somewhere for an extra bit of cover when it's raining uh, you could also use it as a solar still I guess if you wanted or something along those lines but I'd prefer to use it just as cover so that's that next thing two freezer bags now they've got the ziplock on top and these will be good for collecting water now you can get to collect what quite a bit of water in this and it'll have a decent seal on it um, I'm still trying to get some non lubricated condoms as well to go with this they basically do the same thing uh, it's just a bit hard finding them in certain shops but um, yeah they'll be good for water collection or maybe storing food even so uh, um, airtight freezer bags next thing this is my uh, makeshift container at the moment it seems to fit in there well and it works well that's um, just a soup can you know I've tested it on the fire it boils water pretty quickly and now I've just got a bit of cloth in here as well 
um, just for using as a filter when collecting the water. Right, and the next pocket. Right, this is first aid. This is my first aid pack. It's not very big. Um, I'll run through the things I've got in there. But you might be able to see through there. I've got some clips. I've got a sewing kit there. Uh, purification tablets, obviously for disinfecting water. I've got a bandage, a load of plasters, some antiseptic wipes. Um, also got some Savlon antiseptic cream. You know, everything from like sort of small cuts, you know, uh, to larger cuts, obviously. But I feel that I'd be quite good. I think that would serve its purpose. So that's the first aid part. Oh, and I've also got um, two lollies. Reason for it, if you was in like a um, survival situation, obviously you want to, you're going to lose sugar and stuff um, when you're burning. I mean, you've got no calories in you. So a nice sugar boost could help you. So these are just two fruity lollies. I thought they'd be... Might come in handy. Oh, the other part I need in the cover, I'm missing a survival blanket. I still need to get a survival blanket. So that will be part of um, the main compartment with all the rest of the yeah. shelter, mean, shelter items. Right, the next one. Next one's a torch. Uh, usual LED, quite cheap torch. Works great, uh, runs on AAA batteries, put some uh, colour tape around so you can find it in the dark because it is black. Nice lanyard as well. So torch, very useful, you know, when you're at night. Um, people will know when you do overnighters. A torch helps a lot, especially in a survival situation. With that, extra batteries. Now with these I've put the date when I bought them. Uh, they usually have a, a very long life time, you know, you know what I mean. Um, but it might help to change them maybe every year or so just because they can uh, leak and go a bit dodged up. So a torch and some batteries is always a good thing to have. Next thing, sharpening stone, DC3, leather sheath, put some um, yellow tape on it, just as, just a bit more visibility, you know, I mean it's black so if I did drop it, it's just easier to find, uh, I've put quite a lot of tape on things, just for that purpose. Fishing and trapping kit. Now there's not much in this at the moment. Um, I have got a odd button compass there. Uh, just I didn't have anywhere to put the compass, so I just put it there. But uh, I've got a fishing line, hooks, a uh, bit of snare wire. So you know, if I need to make some traps or a bit of fishing, should be able to do that. All right, mirror. Hey, camera. There you go. Uh, funky. That's what the camera looks like. you're wondering he's been asking me some questions about it so there you go but um yeah mirror i actually ripped this out of um if you've ever seen my first video well it one of the first probably is actually um i did a, a review on a shop bought survival kit you know the ready-made ones and um it was just a black case and you lifted up the lid and there was a mirror on the inside so i decided to rip the mirror out of it because it was pretty good you know flexible and everything and I'll put it in this kit. Just put a bit of tape on the back to reinforce it a bit more. But you know, mirrors, signalling, uh, checking wounds, maybe that you can't see. You know, just stuff like that. Along with that, I also need a magnifying glass, um, forensic lens. Obviously, that'd go in my combustion compartment, but that would probably go along with that as well. All right, whistle. Now it's a peeless whistle, the ones without the um, little ball inside and I've heard that the bad thing about them if you're in 
certain conditions, say like really cold temperatures, they can freeze to the side and stop working. And if you need signal for rescue, it's not really going to help your situation if you can't do that. Because uh, whistles travel a lot better than a screaming voice. So an orange high visibility whistle works great. Just a bit of cordage. Um, I do need to buy some more cordage actually. I'm running low. But I've just got a bit of jute twine there. Uh, that could be used for, um, I could make a bow drill string, maybe if I tightened it up, um, weave some more strands to a single bit, um, use it for effecting shelter, a load of different things. Also got a bit of paracord, 550, not the uh, cheapy crap stuff. Well, paracord's pretty cheap as it goes anyway, but... Right, the last compartment... This is the uh, combustion compartment. Now, I've chosen to have quite a few different means of fire. If I'm in a survival situation, I'm going to want to get a fire going no matter how. I'm not going to be all cocky and think, oh, yeah, I'll only, I'll only take a, um, I'll only take a fire steel. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm good enough. I don't need anything else like matches to make fire. But if you did that, you'd probably die. So, um, first thing I have got a fire steel, just my usual one. Um, I will use this, if I was in a situation, I'd try to affect fire with this first, just to save other resources. But, uh, you know, fire still, fantastic. Next thing, just a normal cheapy lighter. I've got quite a few of these. So, um, this has got the, if you can see that, try and zoom in a bit. Yeah, there you go, it's got a, uh, the change, the adjust, the flame adjuster on it. So you can have different heights flame. I think that's quite handy. So that's a, just a mat, um, lighter. You get a bog standard set of them for like a couple of quid. Maybe not even that. Right. Uh, next thing. That's just my sort of little thing I keep Tinder in. Uh, it's got some cotton wool in there. Some char cloth stuck to the lid. I mean this would obviously go with the fire steel combination I mean obviously there's a hole in the tin so I'd use that to make char cloth as well so that's got a multiple purpose right matches now I've put these in a film vial you may have seen these like your grandma have them or something but uh, they used to hold old camera film in them you know they're waterproof so if the purpose they're very good so um, there we go matches You do get a lot of these in here. But, you know, matches are always good to know how to light them. You could also split them down, I guess, if you want. There we go. And I've just got the bit of card there. Obviously, uh, I think the ones that aren't strike on the box ones would be better. Yeah, the best invention ever. Right, so there's your match. Obviously, guys, you know people should practice with matches, lighting them. Um, it's all good. Saying I don't use them, I'm too good. But if you had a match in a survival situation, it was your last one, and you don't really know how to light it properly without it snapping, then uh, it could be pretty screwed. If it snaps, all goes out on you. So that's matches. The last film vial, this is the last piece I have. Now that is, got, just got tinder in it, but it's got petroleum soaked cotton balls. I've, worked, I've managed to get two in there. I can't, can't, can't see that very well, but there's two in there. Um, you know, sure fire in my opinion. Any one of the uh, combustion devices there I've got, I've got there will light that. And that's for bad conditions. So I think that's everything, guys. Right, so I'll show you it. Just a. Uh... So there we go. There's not that much. It doesn't look like that much. But I think I've got exactly what I need there to be fine. 
Uh, like I said, there's a few things I haven't got that I still need. Uh, Non-lubricated condoms, emergency blanket, friends or lens. And I think that's it. Maybe a better compass as well. But um, I think I've got the basics down there. And yeah, the Snug Pack Response Pack. Fantastic bit of kit. Uh, I wear it as a fanny pack configuration. I've got this this um, strap here goes over my shoulder, and then the belt on the back just goes around my waist, and that's it. Just keeps it nice and secure, upright. And uh, I did test that out the other day wearing it around the woods, and it was surprisingly comfortable. But um, yeah, that's uh, my kit, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you got any more suggestions of things to put in it. Feel free to, um, you know, comment, rate, whatever. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys. See ya.